two different perspectives. They, they develop two different types of sciences, and we're going to, that's what we're going to be focusing on. The definition of science is that science comes from the word serre, which means to know. So when we talk about the development of science, the, the very beginning of the development of science, we're talking about people who began to gather knowledge just from observing those things that went on around them. And they began to record that information, they documented that information, and then they passed it on from one generation to the next. In ancient Kemet, we find the earliest examples of the development of sciences, and that one of the first sciences to develop was the science of astronomy. And that is, when people have their basic requirements of life met, they'll often sit down and watch the movement of, of the sun. They watch the movement of the stars across the sky at night. They'll watch the moon go through its metamorphosis. Look, it, those of you who came here this evening, if you noticed the moon, you saw a, a new crescent moon, and right next to the moon was, was a star, was, was Venus, actually, a planet, Venus. And if you observe that moon every night, you're going to see the moon begin to get bigger and bigger. And then you're going to see the moon reach a point where it's going to start to get smaller and smaller. And then the cycle will begin all over again. So to the people who were seeing this for the first time, this truly amazed them. And it, as you watch this, you, you can see a pattern unfolding before your very eyes. And that planet Venus, which is in close proximity to the new moon, is going to change its position every day. So they can see everything around them is moving. The sun moves in the sky. Everything around them is in motion. So that automatically begins to, to, to capture your interest. And by observing these changes, they began to learn some very phenomenal things. The ancient Egyptians knew of the movement of, of, of the moon. They knew of the phases of the moon. They knew of at least five planets. And the word planet comes from uh, a uh, Latin word which means wanderer. So the planets were those stars that appeared to wander across the heavens, didn't seem to, to, to maintain a fixed position in the sky. They wandered from one point to the next. And they, they saw this, 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 this difference. There was a discernible difference between these balls of light that stayed in the same configuration like some of the constellations that we see and then other balls of light that appear to wander across the sky. So by observing this phenomenon, and then by recording this phenomenon, they begin to see a cause and effect relationship between the position of certain stars or planets in the sky and something that occurred on the planet below. It was through understanding and cataloging these events that the, the science of astrology evolved. And those of you who have, who have read uh, John Jackson's Introduction to African Civilization will see in that book, he, he describes how the various stellar configurations were given their, their symbolic associations with animals because the position of those stars in the sky reflected certain activities that took place on the earth associated with agriculture. So if we look at the beginning or the development of agriculture, we see that it's directly related to the understanding of, of man to the movement of stars in the sky. They would learn that there were certain times when you could plant your seeds based on the position of the moon or the phase of the moon and the position of certain stars in the sky. And it's been said in, in, in a number of historical books that the first farmers, the first people to develop the science of agriculture were the women. And that it was the women who, <coughs> who oftentimes were, uh, were, were in the home, who were attending the children while the men may have been out uh, hunting or doing some other things. It was the women who really had the time to observe the movements of the sun and the stars. It was also women who saw a profound relationship between one of the most important bodies in the sky and themselves, that is the moon. The women saw that the moon would undergo a metamorphosis, a phase, just as they would undergo a metamorphosis, a phase, a 28-day cycle. That cycle was the same 
is the cycle of the moon. So that when they began to, to catalog this information, they began to catalog this information in association with the, the stellar systems that they saw. They began to develop lunar calendars, calendars that were based on uh, 13 month, which is associated to the various phases of, of the moon. There was a solar calendar, solar calendar of 365 and quarter days. There also were um, stellar calendars, calendars that were based on the position of certain stars and certain constellations in the heavens. So they had three distinct ways of, of plotting and clocking the movements of events in the heavens and activities that also took place on the planet Earth. One very good example of this process as it relates to agriculture is the significance of the star Sirius. Sirius was referred to as the dog star. Uh, the, the star Sirius would rise, uh, this is around January, excuse me, not January, but uh, June 21st. On June 21st, the star Sirius would rise just before sunrise, and this would signal the annual flooding of the Nile. It was the annual flooding of the Nile that made possible life in Kemet, because it was the annual flooding of the Nile which brought uh, a new layer of silt, a new deposits of soil to the east and the west bank of the Nile. And they saw this, this phenomena occur on an annual basis. When you would have the helical rising of this star Sirius, or when this star Sirius rose just before the sun did, and it only occurred during one time of the year, the flooding of the Nile always came after it. So Sirius on one hand was referred to as the dog star, and that symbolically one of the things that a dog does or a watchdog does is to warn you when somebody or something is coming. So these symbols, the association of, of symbols with these stars was very important, was very significant. And one of the other things that, that the ancestors did when they began to plot the movement of these stars and star systems was to develop a calendar. And this calendar of 365 and a quarter days was associated with, with, with symbols, which they call netters. And the netters represented principles or concepts of the various sources of creation. There were 36 netters in total, 18 male and 18 female. And each of these netters were given, were associated with certain uh, star systems or constellations in the heaven. And each of these netters were given dominion or rule over a 10% portion of the sky. In other words, one of the things that our ancestors did was to divide the, the sky into a circle which had a circumference of 360 degrees. And 10 degrees was given to each of the 36 decans or 36 netters. 36 netters having 10 degrees each within this circle of 360 degrees would give you 360 days. And five additional days were associated to the, the, the netters who were responsible for giving birth to these other 36 netters. So that each day was associated with a principle which reflected an aspect of the creator. They were able to not only divide the year up into segments, but they also divided the day up into segments. The day was associated with uh, several of the sun deities, a horse being one, um, Ra or Ray being the other. Ray was one of the terms for one of the more popular deities of gods in Kemet. And it's from the word Ray that we've gotten the term uh, a ray of light. It refers to this ancient African concept of the deity symbolized by the sun. And then you have another manifestation of the sun when it was in another position in the sky in which it was associated with the deity Set. Set represents the forces of darkness, symbolically the forces of darkness, which is where we have derived the word sunset, where the sun goes when it disappears from the horizon. These are symbolic terms that express 